I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew. Thank God it's the best part of the show yet again. I don't know what shit we're talking about, but it, chances are it's garbage. Here's the real. Here's the. Here's what you really pay for. Space news. This is whatever. Baby. Space news. What everybody's been waiting for. It's everyone's waiting for. The rest is for. just open and closing, right? They're yeah. just here for the space news. Yeah. Uh, perfect. Well, uh, let's get right on into it. Uh, first up, we have is China's new telescope the key to finding self-replicating swarms of alien robots? God, scary. I hope so. <laughs> Me too. Um, I, I don't even know what their satellite is. I mean, why do I feel like it, China's sat satellite looks like the Eye of Sauron? I feel like it's just bad. Like this, he this here? Yeah, well, probably. Um, that and they're, I just was reading about how they're launching these like interstellar, like gliding nuclear attack things. They they can do nuke attacks from anywhere with without much detection. I was like, oh, this is all good. That's terrifying. So we're we're talking about the five hundred meter fast telescope. Is that this is guy like, here? I'm I'm guessing. Oh, you mean yeah. Goldeneye? It kind of looks yeah. like the Ar the Arecibo telescope that collapsed. Yeah, like it's a radio, it's a radio telescope. Like, yeah, that's yeah. a golden eye. I played the game. I've seen it. That's well, that's it. the the golden eye one. That's the Arecibo one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, Arecibo. This is just like twice the size of Arecibo or something crazy. <clears throat> it's, a big, it's a big boy. So I guess we're just we're they're gonna be. I don't know like how they're what their plan is to get swarms of alien robots, but hey. Nope. So. Do uh, sound a good. doctor by the name of Zaza Osmanov of the Free University of Tbilisi, Georgia. I probably butchered this. Are we but whatever. sure we're not talking about James Bond? Because that sounds like a villain name. <laughs> we're definitely not talking about James Bond. Talking more probably some Chekhov, Star Trek stuff like this. So um, he recently wrote a paper talking about um, taking into account a lot of different uh, factors and kind of applying them to things like the the Kardashev scale, which we've talked about before, basically, um, you know, type within one, type, type three, right? Uh, types of uh, when speculation within science, you know, certain studies um, having different type of civilizations and where they can uh, like the amount of energy that they'd be able to manipulate, whether it's on a planetary scale, uh, a, a solar system scale or a galactic scale, pretty much. And so he theorizes that if one of these civilizations, you know, probably a type two or type three were to produce what is known as a von Neumann probe, which are essentially self-replicating swarm of extraterrestrial robots. Um, as you do these, these robots, uh, being products of an imperfect as, as they would be uh, an imperfect like reproduction replication like this, they would give off a certain types of radiation that could potentially be picked up by the types of radio frequencies that the fast, uh, that radio telescope is specifically designed to, um, to observe. Uh, to oh, me, so like, I don't, I don't want to know if they, <laughs> if they detect self-replicating, Robots that are on the way here, just let it be a surprise. There's so few surprises in life. Let the swarm of potentially killer robots be one of them. The, the and just let them kill us fast. The robotic flood, just wipe out universe. So they're pretty much saying that Creeping this death. this telescope is our best hope yet of finding another civilization that has beat the Fermi paradox. Yeah, right. According to this according to this scientist. Like he published a paper with some some calculations based on a few things. It is yet to be peer reviewed yet. So some other people need to take it, take a look at his math and probably check his, some of his equations and things like this. And some of the probably assumptions that he's made, but um, yeah, it's essentially kind of like that. If his, if his calc to his calculations, he uh, hypothesizes that you could probably detect swarms up to like depending on which type of civilization for type two would be like 16,000 light years away is how oh. far you could be in and for a type three civilization you could potentially be detectable up to 400 million light years like in that bubble and that's a chinese telescope yeah it's so in china. even if they if, if they found that shit they probably wouldn't tell anybody anyways they'd keep all that secret scary killer <laughs> robot fucking technology to themselves yeah. <laughs> well it's um, not like it's in China, but they don't like 
I'm sure there's many international team that operates it. Like you know. Oh, okay. Um, we talked about it last time on Space News. It got canceled, but it finally happened. Star Trek's William Shatner made it to space along with Jeff Spacos on the Dick Rocket. Um, it was it was cool seeing him come down in his reaction. Um, the, you mean you mean uh, T.J. Hooker's William Shatner? Yeah, uh, <laughs> where he they uh, you know he's saying he's he's saying it's he came back and he's saying that this this is so fragile. This Earth is so fragile. And he's like, I hope I don't lose this feeling. I hope this feeling doesn't go away, whatever it is. So, um, you know, he was brought to tears. Um, Why is he saying it's so fragile, though? Just a lot of people say that when they go up and they see Earth, they get this. Um, there's like a it's phrase the, for it. It's called the overview effect. Yeah. You sure you didn't see something yeah. on the wing? <laughs> Maybe. There's something, something thing on, the thing. <laughs> on the wing. Something on the wing. Dan did so a much better one last space news. You're going to be judged accordingly. <laughs> you did that joke on Space News? Yeah, yeah. well, of course. Oh, oh, yeah, as you do. Yeah, yeah, so I can't believe Shatner's 90 years old. I didn't realize 11, that either. 11 minutes in space. Yeah. It's good old Canadian genes, man. Well, that's a good. it's good that he didn't spend any longer because they're finding that long hauls in space seem to increase brain damage risk. Um, <laughs> you know, we've been doing experiments forever about, you know, people in the ISS and um, varying issues that interstellar travel would have on our bodies um so to find out that there's brain damage risk i mean wasn't a surprise there's basically every other risk involved like your your muscles start to atrophy like you, you're getting tons of issues of course we're going to have there's going to be brain function uh issues as well, well it, it the study that they performed it seems to find risk increased risk of brain damage because they analyzed the blood samples taken from five cosmonauts before and after their extended stays on the ISS. And so when they took a look at these blood samples, the researchers observed that they have elevated concentrations of three biomarkers, which are linked to brain damage uh, often in other studies. So it's not clear. It's not clear to what extent the brain of the cosmonauts actually might be damaged if they're actually damaged at all. They just know that these biomarkers have been comprehensively linked across multiple studies to neurological disorders in the past. So is it, do they know why? Like, or is it maybe like some type of issues with hypoxia, hypoxia or anything like that? Like they're at this point, they're not really sure because we only have so much data. Like if you can imagine, like a, only a handful of people relatively have been to space and spent enough time in space to kind of like put the data together. Yeah, I guess we so don't. So they're don't, still kind of not 100 percent sure. Yeah, our ranges are. Yeah, the number of people is pretty small. We have a pretty small pool of uh, people to test on. Um, the, the biomarkers, let's say what they are. Neurofilament light. Glial, fibrillary, fibrillary acidic protein, GFAP, total tau, T taus, and two amylobe beta proteins, NFL and GFAP. <laughs> gotta keep with, gotta stay away from those ones. Yeah. So watch out for those biomarkers if the you're worse than GFAPs. Um, right. Mysterious like, source in deep space generates 1,652 FRBs in just 47 days. You guys remember, like, early on in this podcast reporting on like the first couple fast radio bursts and now it seems like we're just getting good at finding them all the time um you know yeah it, it just seems like we're every other week we're getting some sort of fast radio burst from pulsars and other stars around the system um but this one it's a new mystery to solve uh it's quite a few in just 47 days so well, uh, so the one that they, yeah, the one that they're talking about is FRB one, FRB one two one one zero two, uh, that they discovered in two thousand, or they've been watching since two thousand nineteen, and so they've counted the most being, yeah, that's one thousand six hundred fifty two flares, uh, in forty seven days. Uh, the only thing is, is that this this source that they're trying to track down, they're not sure where it's coming from, but something very unusual is about it is that it, it there's no sign of periodicity. Like there's no recurrence, like wh when it's happening. Yeah. They can't track the, it like other ones, how they've narrowed it down that it's, you know, possible quasars or pulsars or, or rotating like that because of the, 
the pattern it gives off, but this one is seemingly they're not sure. Right. It's just like, yeah, as long as they've been watching it, they're not really sure what it is, whether it's like a spinning, like a spinning object, like a magnetar or something like that. But they're thinking that it could possibly be two objects and they're just not sure what it is, but they know that it's just, it's really strange and it's fun to watch at least. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Hey, that's all the time we got for space news. We got to get back to the show. uh, So Andrew can get to bed. Um, I got most of the space news from sciencealert.com. Uh, it's one of my favorite websites. Not the only website that got space news, but most of the articles from today's show were from that website. So if you love space news as much as we do, go give them some love. Um, other than that, anything else before we peace out? Nope. All right. You better hurry up. It's past my bedtime, apparently. We gotta go. Yeah. We gotta go. All right. Map back to the show. Keep those eyes on the skies. To keep up to date with all things alien theorist theorizing, follow us across social media on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Facebook. For updates on new videos and content on YouTube, don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep those eyes on the skies with alien theorists theorizing.